All right, we're gonna do a top five video. And this is gonna be five things all medically complex families know. Being I a think it's team. most. But you like to use words like all in your titles. You think, oh, you think most medically complex <laughs> families. I, see, I, I think these are gonna be things that all medically complex families are gonna be aware of at least. Maybe yeah. they're like they're, they don't have intimate knowledge of them, but yeah. Like, I think the first one, we don't have as intimate of knowledge as many people. So the first one is, it is normal to have unexpected hospital trips for, for a lot of people. Like, it's expected to go to the hospital unexpectedly. Yeah. In fact, I would say that if we don't go to the hospital for an unexpected hospital trip at least once or twice a year, that's like abnormal for I us. I think we have gone two or three years without an unplanned hospital trip, actually, for a while. We had hospital <laughs> stays. We had no unexpected ones for like, because I was worried they were going to take away her PR and oxygen. She was doing so well. Mm. Like, but we definitely know it's normal to, oh, you know what? Never mind. We're going to go to the hospital. And like for some families, they go so much more than us. And there's people that like stay there for months. We've right. never stayed in the hospital for a month even. Yeah. Not even one month. Not We've stayed straight. several weeks. I think a little over two weeks is our longest. I think a little We've over stayed two several weeks. weeks. Well, so. well, okay, wait. Our hip surgery. Mm -hmm. And now that, that was, was planned. It wasn't unexpected. But... No, but well, it's both though. The amount of like long planned stays, the amount of unexpected. Yeah, it's just it's normal for some people to spend a lot of time in the hospital. Yeah, we call it our home away from home. Unfortunately, or second home, Raylan's second home. Very unfortunately, we call it that. <laughs> right, number two. Oh, <laughs> this is you don't want to have surgery this uh, the first weekend in July. Basically. If you can stay out of the hospital in July, if you're at a teaching hospital, <laughs> stay out of the hospital. So why is that? That's when the new residents first start their rotation. So I learned about it because I was a medically complex mom. Raylan had to have a surgery and we couldn't really put it off and they gave us the 4th of July weekend. I knew what weekend it was. I knew. So, but explain why you don't want to have surgery the first weekend in July. I mean, I just did because you have brand new residents. It's brand residents. new residents and therefore, what happens? I mean, they're learning. They're the newest ones. <laughs> they're, you're more likely to have complications during surgery. It's like, it's proven statistically. Mm -hmm. You're more likely to die at the hospital in July. Don't go. It's kind of scary. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You'll now, look that up. You'll fact check me on that. Uh, but let us know in the comments. Have you? Did you know that one? Like, if you're a medically complex family, did you know this one? That you don't want to have surgery the first weekend in July. Or really all so, of July. <laughs> and like, we did. We did have to have surgery last July. Fourth of July weekend. So it's a holiday weekend. You know, like, some of your senior staff have seniority and they're off. Because it was holiday weekend. We were there. It was a Friday. So, like... People who have the most seniority get off on holidays, I'm guessing, you know, everyone has to take their turn, but, and then plus you had new residents and knowing it had me a little on edge. And I also just had my eyes peeled for what would happen. We saw a doctor complaining at some residents mm -hmm. while Raylan was in recovery. Mm -hmm. I don't think he realized, Hey, there's parents paying attention to us. Cause he was on the other side of the room and the recovery room is kind of big, but we just looked at each other like, Mm -hmm. and start okay. but anyways and they did make a mistake they messed up her vns um that surgery uh number three as a medically complex family we do the jobs of several people writing their letters making their phone calls uh we basically have m many jobs we do a lot of if you want stuff done in a timely manner, and we don't do enough of it, which is why it takes forever to get some things done. If you want stuff done in a timely manner, you have to be a caseworker for your kid, which means phone calls, like sometimes weekly to the same place to follow up. And sometimes it means like, oh, you need the doctors to send this fax back? Okay, I will call the doctor's office for you. Oh, you still didn't get the fax? Okay, I will go to the doctor's office and pick it up and I will email it to you. Like. We do a lot of casework stuff. Right. But then, like, I feel like every parent does several jobs. Yeah. Ours are different, though. Like, we know how to do physical therapy. We know how to do speech. We know how to do OT. Now, only for Raylan. Right. Like, you couldn't give us some random kid and us necessarily help him. But, but like, you're a caseworker for all kinds of things. You're a caseworker for 
Um, I mean, that's what caseworkers do. They deal yeah. with all this stuff. But you're also a like you're you're a secretary for doctors. I <laughs> mean, it just goes on I've and on. I've definitely written letters of medical necessity and just handed them to the doctor. They're always like, oh. Great, thanks. And sometimes I'd print it out and hand it to them. They're like, can you just email me a copy of this? Right. So, yeah, I've learned all about letters of medical necessity, mm -hmm. which ties in with the fourth one. You understand how insurance works better than most people. Because if you get a denial for something, the doctor needs to write a letter of medical necessity. And we've learned about copays and secondary insurance and copays and all the rules of Medicaid is your secondary insurance because Raylan has two insurances. Just how much things cost, man. Things oh are... yeah, we see the bills because we look at the we look at what's billed and we look at what the insurance pays. And we understand and... the deductibles, I think, better than a lot of people do. Yeah. We know about EOBs. Yeah. We know about yeah, letters of medical necessity, prior approvals. Stuff I wish I didn't need to know. <laughs> it's helpful though sometimes. It actually helped us get money back when the insurance company made a mistake on Corey's dental stuff. Mm -hmm. I knew enough about insurance to know we shouldn't have charged us that money. But right. it took me 50,000 phone calls to get that mistake fixed. And the fifth one's fun. You can get. You can order <laughs> some very interesting things on Amazon that you would not think of. We have ordered, this one's, because of COVID, I think lots of people have done this, but pulse socks I can't tell you how many finger pulse socks we bought. We have a favorite one. <laughs> Pill cutters, I bet lots of yeah, that's people not that have strange. bought that one. Yeah. But have you bought urinary cath kits? It's like a, that's a medical device. Mm -hmm. You can buy it. We bought G-Tube. Mickey buttons. Yeah, you can actually buy the G2 Mickey button. That goes in your that stomach. That goes in your stomach. You can buy it off of Amazon. We have bought them <laughs> off of Amazon. <laughs> Keto strips, there's a lot of people that bought those. Uh, Duoderms, the Scancy. Like I medical. do this because they put it on um, little kids' faces when they get NG tubes. And that's when we first got introduced to that. But it's a weird medical tape stuff. I looked it up because in nursing school, you can buy IV starter kits. Like, so I can buy stuff to put an IV in you for practice. <laughs> oh they were goodness. kind of expensive. Like, not the needle though, right? Yeah, the You needle. can buy the needle on Amazon? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> medical supplies. Okay, you need a prescription for urinary catheters for insurance to give them to you. But you don't need a prescription to buy them. Mm -hmm. You need a prescription for insurance to pay for a G-tube. But if you need an extra one, they're on Amazon. Like. like I just didn't realize that kind of stuff was on Amazon. Like, you can't buy, I guess you think of it like prescription medicine. You can't buy a prescription medicine on Amazon. And so I kind of, that's how I thought about urinary catheters and feeding tubes. Like I would think you can't buy that on Amazon, but you can. Apparently you can, yeah. So if you're ever in a pinch and you need an extra catheter. You got the money. Go to Amazon. The stuff is expensive. I mean, if your insurance pays for it, Amazon is not, you know, insurance doesn't reimburse for Amazon purchases. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you could submit your thing to insurance and mm. get them to. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So that's our list. What are some things that if you're a medically complex family, what are some things that you think only medically complex families know? Leave them in the comments. I'd be interested to hear it. Bye. Bye.